tonight at some point we begin a seven game homestand and the first of four against the Chicago Cubs the Cubs at 28 wins this season the Cardinals the best record in baseball the umbrellas are out we're expecting over 40,000 here tonight and the Cardinals have had great recent success against Chicago Cardinals last two seasons against the Cubs at Bush Stadium averaging nearly six runs a game the ERA below three and they are 13 and four against them that's Rick Horton I'm Dan McLaughlin also the tarp is on behind us so we will have a delay at the start of our ball game tonight and at some point we hope to play we're not sure when that may be now John Mosellock was on the pregame show he said with Jim uh, the rain should stop hopefully after 6:30. at that point 40 45 minutes to uh, address what needs to happen with the field but we hope to have baseball tonight and looking forward to the homestand too. the cubs and the cardinals we certainly know about the tradition there uh, we got a little history with the texas rangers as well so it's going to be an interesting homestand the cardinals one game over 500 on the road trip probably could have been a bit better uh, struggled a bit in miami uh, the teams like the cubs dan are the teams you have to beat and the Cardinals will send Shelby Miller to the mound tonight. Shelby has been outstanding here at home. Right now he sits and waits and watches the rain fall at Bush. Mike, how are you?
baseball and Bill Finley and his crew have the field looking dynamic as usual and all those wet spots out on the tarp have been cleaned up the infield looks good Dale Swain and the Cubs are here and we've got baseball coming up next. teams they hooked up for a brief two game set at Wrigley Field earlier this season and now Shelby Miller and the Cardinals playing host to Chicago tonight so Shelby Miller impressive not just among rookies but in all of Major League Baseball our lows never stop improving one of the things about Shelby is the first inning that we've noticed 5.54 earned run average but after that he gets stingy only one and a half runs per nine after that first inning the whip much lower as well Shelby making his first career start against Chicago. So the Cardinals return home after a disappointing series over the weekend with the Marlins. You can see on Friday night why the team would struggle anybody would against Fernandez he was maybe the most impressive opposing pitcher we've seen this year but then Mike Matheny's club came out put up a bunch of runs and hits on the board Saturday and yesterday you don't want to say flat but it just didn't seem like the team was clicking so return back home and settle in for a little baseball here with Chicago certainly wasn't a happy flight yesterday the Cardinals did not play well they did not swing the bat early in the game and tried to come back late it wasn't enough and you talked about the game that Jose Fernandez pitched uh, early in that series sometimes that makes a team that is struggling think that they're better than they are when they've got a pitcher that dominates as he did they have Stanton back Cardinals lost two out of three turn the page and work on the Cubs. You wouldn't believe what we have to do during these rain delays to pry Ricky away from the TV after the sixth time that he's seen boys in the hall. And here's a look at the lineup that Shelby Miller will face here at Bush Stadium. The Cubs Luis Valbuena leads it off followed by Starlin Castro. Nate Sherholtz who's had a very good start to his year. Alfonso Soriano Anthony Rizzo Ryan Sweeney Wellington Castillo Darwin Barney very sure handed at second base the gold glover and the pitcher Travis Wood their pitchers can hit around the horn is brought to you by Dobbs and will highlight Yachty he's got 10 of 16 stolen base attempts against him this year we bring that up because for a while we looked at Shelby Miller how slow he was to the plate would teams be aggressive they have been and here's a look at his overall mark and it's brought to you by Kia the Cubs do run a little bit more than the Cardinals do but not by much Miller 
seven and four on the season. The key for him is not only holding base runners, but just keeping his pitch count down. He can work deep into a game. We've seen him get onto a roll, and we saw him early this season go uh, seven plus innings without giving up a hit, and he actually been phenomenal again once he gets past that first inning so low pitch count for Shelby Miller a lot of strike ones watchful eye of Derek Lilliput well here at Bush Stadium and really all season long for the most part the BJC healthcare difference maker tonight look at the current home hitting streaks of these four Beltron Carpenter Craig and freeze they all saw their hit streak snapped on the road trip but uh, these four all in the lineup really playing good baseball big numbers there too. the lowest one 364 and Carlos Beltron coming up a terrific series this weekend against the Marlins the two home run day on Saturday and Carlos with his teammates have been so good with runners in scoring position this year he leads baseball in that category Beltron, the switch hitter at 460 with runners in scoring position. Luis Valbueno leads it off three for seven over the weekend against the New York Mets. A series in which the Cubs took two of three and should have swept if not for Carlos Marmol, who blew a three run lead in the ninth inning against New York. Shelby's first pitch is taken for a ball and we're underway here at Bush Stadium. An hour and 59 minutes length of our rain delay. Valbuena is hitting 244 six home runs and he's driven in 19. That's ball two. You mentioned the job that Bill Finley and his staff has done just to make this field playable but one of the things that Cardinal fans will also comment on is just how well the folks that work here at the ballpark make Kind of the seats comfortable and you know there's a lot of uh, moisture and things to deal with from the fans point of view too and the operations folks here at Bush Stadium always do a nice job of of understanding the frustration from a fans point of view and trying to make it as comfortable as possible after a rain delay. Here's a 3 0 pitch and that's taken for a strike. Rotation change with the umpires. DJ Rayburn is calling now the balls and strikes. Bill Welke, he was supposed to be behind home plate. He's at first. Adrian Johnson at second. Field and Colbreth is at third. And that's ball four. So a leadoff walk, and that's how we start the four game series. 27th walk for Valbuena, and he's second. And walks at the start of play tonight for the Cubs. Part of why they put him in that leadoff spot. The Cubs have David DeJesus on the disabled list. They also have one of their relievers, Rafael Dolis, who we've seen before. And Kuji Fuchikawa, who was supposed to be their closer. And those are the three injured Cubs they're dealing with. Here is Starlin Castro hitting just 145 in his last 69 at bats. Overall at 241. And he looks at a strike. You say that though, and then you look at his young career, it's been prolific. 529 hits the last three seasons, a career 297 hitter. And when you start looking at the numbers and the amount of hits he's had, he's in exclusive territory in that regard. That's taken for a strike. Nothing in two. He's been so good. He probably wakes up in the morning and says, how in the world am I hitting 241? Both he and Anthony Rizzo, 23 years of age. Rizzo just at 245. And those two both locked up long term for Chicago. Rizzo most recently. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Right handers come into play against Shelby Miller hitting just 169. Lefties overall at 250. Long look and here it comes. That's it out of play. 
Cardinals rookies have been one of the stories of this great start for the Cardinals coming into play tonight. Shelby, a big part of this. 221 and two thirds innings. The rookies are 17 and 8. ERA just over three. If not for this farm system, you wonder where the Cardinals would be this year. Rookies have been outstanding, and Shelby has been the brightest spot of all. The open stance of Castro. And the breaking ball that's taken high and inside. Two and two. Miller coming off a start in which he allowed four earned runs against the New York Mets. First time ever in his career. He's given up four earned runs in a game. Struck out 10 in that game, too. Two two pitch. Got him. Off speed pitch in Miller. His first strikeout of the night. And we may have just seen the reason why Starlin Castro is hitting just 241. Curveball from Miller. Just waves at it. Chevy Fox tracks that pitch. Certainly didn't hit the knees, but had a hard time picking up the spin, and perhaps that's part of his offensive woes. Shelby Miller tried the curveball early in the count, spun it, but came right back to it. Talk of Nate Sherholtz being the representative from Chicago for the All Star game coming up in New York. Hitting 296, nine home runs. He's driven in 25. So right now he's already matched his career high for home runs back in 2011. He had nine with San Francisco. And he's riding an eight game hitting streak at the start of play tonight. Homered off a of Lance Lynn in Chicago. Actually had a very good series against the Cardinals there. He's been in a couple of World Series himself as a member of the Giants. Here's the 0 1 pitch. And you can make it 0 2. When Shelby gets ahead 0 and 2, the opposition in this count is hitting 0 45 this year. So he is putting these guys away with this count. A short lead at first by Valbuena. Did not go in the dirt and blocked by Yachty. One and two. The Cubs overall in the National League. 11th and hitting at 242. Outfield is straight away. Beltron pretty deep in right field. One two pitch. And it's ripped out to right, but Beltron playing deep makes the catch on a sinking liner. And there's two away. Still haven't seen that consistency with the breaking ball here in the first. Well, he gave one too many looks, perhaps, to the runner at first base. You could see him being conscious of that. And somehow, when he got to deliver the pitch, his body was ahead of his arm, and he kind of flipped that curveball up there and got away with it. Sherholz, fortunately, didn't get underneath that ball. Otherwise, he might be looking at 2 nothing. Alfonso Soriano, the cleanup man for Chicago, coming off a stellar campaign a, a year ago. Seven time All Star. Came a full time outfielder in 2006 when he was with Washington. Remember Frank Robinson? And the Nationals said, Nope, you are going to play left field. He wanted to play second base. And after that year was through, he signed a monster deal with the Chicago Cubs. And they say that his defense has really picked up. The latter stages here of his Cubs career. 
due in large part to the first base coach and that's Dave McKay who we saw 16 years with St. Louis and before that he was with Tony La Russa in Oakland last year his best year defensively he does have four errors this year but he's always up there throwing runners out because teams will run on him. they just think they can and he catches a lot of guys at third base at second always up there in outfield assists very deep and the one one is fouled back and still a dangerous at bat you bet he is by the way to further your point I, I think it would shock people if you would have said beginning of 2007 then jump ahead to this year that Alfonso Soriano would be second in that time period in outfield assists many would have thought you're crazy but he is second to Jeff Francoeur in that time different kind of arms different types of reputations no question outfield straight away and here's a one two pitch to Soriano the wiry frame and just explodes out of the stance and remember for a while earlier in his career he was certainly a threat to steal last three games just one hit one for 13 with three K's. The 2 2. Keep an eye on Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. That's in Cincinnati, and the Reds have a 2 1 lead. That's in the bottom of the seventh. So, one way or another, you win a ball game here, you're Have separating game yourself. Up on somebody. Yep. I always thought that Soriano was a very good low ball hitter. And Miller has that explosive fastball up in the zone. A 3 2 pitch. Fouled back. Lots of power. A Rod Pujols, these are active players. Paul Canerco, some believe a Hall of Famer with the White Sox, Soriano, and then Beltre. Most career home runs active right now in baseball, right handed batters. And we'll see three of those in the next couple of weeks. Seeing one right now. Got him. A strikeout for Shelby Miller. Strikes out two. Cardinals coming up in the home half of the first.
Here in St. Louis, the Plaza Tire Service replay and the pitch to Castro. Curveball in the dirt. Castro couldn't hold up. And a second strikeout in the inning. Another curveball. This one hangs a bit, but Soriano swings through it. Same result. Two strikeouts for Shelby Miller, who averages over a strikeout an inning. Travis Wood beat the Cardinals on May 7th. He has had 12 out of 13 of his starts, quality starts. So he's having an outstanding year for Chicago. Change up, really his best pitch, has an overhand curveball. 1 0 pitch to Matt Carpenter. Mentioned the change up back in 2009 when Travis Wood was still property of the Reds before the trade for Sean Marshall. His changeup was rated the best in their system. Also was rated as the best control in the system as well. One ball and two strikes. Doesn't throw particularly hard. Throws right over the top from the left side. The Cardinals have had some trouble in the early going this year against left-handed starters. But really everybody in the National League has had trouble against Wood. Cardinals are 7 and 8 against lefties this year. Wood at Wrigley. Very good, nearly pitching eight innings against St. Louis in that split between the two teams. And his home runs allowed are way down this year, which has been something that stands out. Normally, historically in his career, a lot of home runs as Carpenter strikes out. And that's how we started for St. Louis. Let's meet the Cardinals lineup with Carpenter, Beltron, and Holiday. Followed by Craig Molina, David Freeze, John Jay, Cosma, and Shelby Miller. Around the Horn is presented by Dobbs and the Chicago Cubs. Tied for the most errors in the National League. And if you're going to point a finger as you look at Beltron, the switch hitter, a lot of it goes to their young shortstop, Starlin Castro. He has 10 of them, but their catcher, who's also very talented, Wellington Castillo has seven errors, which is a very high number for a catcher. He has a good future in front of him, to be sure, as does Castro. Young teams make a lot of errors. Some believe that maybe Castro's best bet is to move to the outfield, maybe play third base, and not at short. Two balls and one strike. He's a very talented player, a lot of flash. Good range, but with that flash comes errors, too. Three balls, one strike on Carlos Beltran. And Carlos pops it up. Darwin Barney makes the catch already at 53 errorless games this season for Darwin Barney. Toyota keys to the game. I need you to really break this down. And again, this is brought to you by Toyota. Cardinals against uh, Travis Wood, 294 average. There are a lot of players in this lineup. I believe there's six with an average of 300 or better. But Travis Wood this season. According to our Toyota Keys, just 191 opponent average. That is tied for the best in the National League. So the key is get to the lefty Travis Wood. Some way, somehow. Get into that bullpen of the Cubs. Remember what you've done against him in the past. Don't remember what he's doing against the league this year. Here is Holiday with two outs. Had a chance to watch. Yesterday's strikeout of Holiday Ciszek with the bases loaded. And now I know why he was arguing. Absolutely. That, that was a half foot outside pitch he was called out on, and that ended the game, and the Cardinals had dropped two of three. To be fair, the score was seven to two at the time, but Holiday batting with the bases loaded, you want at least a shot at it. Matt Carpenter was on deck. Cardinals started. The offense going way too late yesterday. Off speed pitch and Holiday strikes out. So two in the inning. 
For the lefty, Travis Wood. Cubs and Cardinals. Fox Sports Midwest. Nearly a two-hour rain delay, but we've got baseball tonight, one of the great rivalries in all of sports, the Cubs and the Cardinals. And we're going to give you three things to know about Shelby, one of 13 pitchers to hit a home run this season. He actually had two hits that night, and that was against Arizona, the only two he's gotten this year. Leads MLB rookies in wins, and three consecutive no-hitters in high school. That includes a perfect game. By the way, that was done in a playoff run in right. the state of Texas for Shelby Miller. Derek Lilliquist, the Cardinals pitching coach, has seen these rookies come up and perform so well. And it's hard to believe, but Shelby Miller, if he gets a win tonight, He'll have eight before the All Star break. And since 1969, there have been two Cardinal pitchers, rookies, that have recorded eight wins before the break. Andy Bennis being one, excuse me, Alan Bennis being one, and the other was Jaime Garcia. As Rizzo taps it to first, his counterpart is there, and that's Alan Cray. And by our count, depending how the Cardinals want to work the off days leading into the All-Star break, Shelby would have four, maybe five more starts before the All-Star break. So certainly you would think he'd get to eight, if not more. Well, he's been, as we mentioned, the brightest spot of all the young pitchers. But there's been a lot of bright spots, not just Shelby Miller. And, you know, we'll see how the whole season unfolds. But... I love what we've seen from the left-hander Segrist out of the bullpen. I think he's got a lot of upside. Potentially pitch late in games. In key situations against guys like Votto and some other big left-handed hitters in our league. And so really a lot of credit to the Cardinals farm system for developing these power arms. It was Ryan Sweeney as he flied out to Holiday. And it brings in their catcher, Wellington Castillo. The Cubs actually carry eight relievers. So very short bench. Julio Julio Bourbon, Diner Navarro is their backup catcher, Cody Ransom, and then the switch hitter Scott Hairston. That's the four on their bench. Fastball at 94 from Shelby. And when you have just one catcher on your bench, you're limited whether or not you want to use Navarro or not, who's been their best pinch hitter. So see how the Cubs make their moves throughout this series but 
You're really tied up a bit if you're Dale Swain. And in their mind, I think they believe they need as many relievers as they can get out there to try to get outs late in games, and they're doing some experimenting out there with, with who their best seven, eight, nine guys are. And that's taken up and in by Castillo, one and two the count. Shelby Miller has struck out 29% of the batters that he's faced. That's the highest percentage in the National League. And more times than not, it's with a fastball that is up. More than 40% have been on those high fastballs. You mentioned the fact that the batting average is really low on 0 and 2. And what that tells me is he's getting a lot of guys out 0 and 2. So he's attacking them, trying to put them away, throwing something close enough. That you can't take it like that pitch. I mean, how do you take this pitch? How do you know that's a millimeter outside? Hmm. Here's a 3 2, and it's a walk. And Miller thought he had strike three on the previous pitch, and I would happen to agree with him. That's the second walk issued by the righty, and it brings in Darwin Barney, their eighth place hitter. Think about second baseman in the National League. In our minds right now, it's Carpenter, Phillips, Cincinnati. But this guy is very good defensively, but does not swing the bat all that well. He's hitting 214. Comes into play tonight, having hit in five straight. His on base percentage is 283. Cubs were really down on him when we were in Chicago last. Again, the gloves magnificent, but if you're going to play every day. You have to get on base more than 29% of the time. You compare that with Matt Carpenter, who has an on base percentage of over 400. Pat Hughes there on the left, the play by play voice of the Cubs, and Keith Moreland, longtime Cub on the right. Did many a college baseball game with Keith Moreland. That's to the backstop and advancing on the play, Castillo to second base. I did many a backing up third base with Keith Moreland. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much fun. I bet. Keith is a uh, Texas Longhorn through and through, and we did uh, Big 12 baseball for a number of years together. He also worked prior to this job doing the uh, Longhorns on uh, radio for football as well. Good guy. Pat Hughes has a great collection of CDs of many of the top voices of baseball, including Jack Buck. One two is popped up and out of play. Speaking of uh, good baseball teams like Texas, it is the College World Series happening in Omaha right now. And Darwin Barney was part of back to back national champions from Oregon State, fourth round pick in 2007. There's a 1 2 pitch. Get out of play again. At what point do you think Rick that the Cubs have to say that this guy has got to hit to stay in the lineup. He tied an all time record of 141 consecutive airless games. And obviously very good defender. This year no airs. And dating back to last season it's now 56 straight but you have to hit to stay in the lineup. So we'll be in the lineup until somebody better is ready. Yeah I guess that is the, the point in there. Cubs clearly are rebuilding at this point. Jed Hoyer is the GM. Theo Epstein, baseball operations, the president of the club, former Red Sox GM. Drafted a third baseman from San Diego. Their first round pick. Just recently named the Golden Spikes winner. Top college player.
Cardinals announced today that they signed their second round draft choice Oscar Mercado actually at the ballpark today talking to all the local media Cardinals signed six other players as well but Mercado a young shortstop from Tampa who was headed to Florida State and Cardinal scouting director Dan Kantrovitz believes that he is the best amateur shortstop available in the country and we're very excited to have him in the Cardinal system. Lifted into left center field on the move John Jay he's got it casually making that basket catch. Speaking of errorless streaks. 213 games straight for John Jay without an error. Plaza entire service replay as we head to break. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. One hour and 59 minute rain delay. And now we've got baseball tonight. Rick Horton, Dan McLaughlin with you. Wood to Alan Craig. And the pitch is taken high for a ball. Allen is hitting 313. Six home runs. He's driven in 51, and that is fourth best currently in the National League. Always worth waiting an hour and 59 minutes to play the Cubs. This rivalry is so much fun and really has been over the years. Really a lot of emotional games that we can think of in the past and kind of well fought late inning games. You think about Dusty Baker and Tony La Russa, that kind of part of my favorite era, I think, of the kind of the combustibility of this little rivalry, but certainly a friendly one from the fans' point of view. I know a lot of Cardinal fans love to go to Wrigley Field as as we do too. There's something special about that ballpark, but the Cub fans will show up here too. Speaking of fans, how about this? Nearly uh, the two hour rain delay. Rain in the forecast later, and yet I bet we have over 40,000 yeah. here tonight. It's incredible. Not many empty seats. And that's swung on and missed by Craig.
Travis Wood an even 500 record. And opponents overall hitting 191 against him. He and Clayton Kershaw the best in that department of the National League. Two strikes. Opponents are hitting just 130 this year against him. I'm looking change up here. I'm probably going to be out because I can't hit anything, but I'm looking change up. Struck out three of the first four as we flash back May 12th, and that's not Tony La Russa, it's Kyle Loesch. You remember that? Hilarious. Kyle Loesch as Tony La Russa. Tony was out. The shingles. I mean, it was almost like Bobby Valentine after he had been ejected as the manager of the Mets and then had the fake glasses and mustache. I don't know if you remember seeing that. I do. As Molina hits it to second base. And there's two away. Jersey coming up. It's presented by Tickets.com. Looking ahead to the Marlin series, so that'll be after the next road trip. Mike Shannon bobblehead, Holiday Jersey, and then Christian Day at the ballpark. Here's David Freeze at 355 on the road trip. In my mind, he and Beltron are swinging the best batch right now in this lineup. Agreed. David's starting to pull the ball with a little bit of authority. Always hits the ball well the other way if, if the pitch kind of dictates that. But he's really using bolts the right and the left side. Not one of his better swings there. We've seen a number of those types of swings this season against Travis Wood. Scoreless after two. The field ready to play tonight. So much rain in the area last few weeks. And we've been dealing with rain, whether it's at home or on the road, like Thursday, the day game against Matt Harvey, and it was Adam Wainwright and Jim. We weren't sure if we were going to play in that game, were we? Yeah, and Mike Matheny points to that start by Adam Wainwright as showing the younger guys how to get through a rain delay. He says rain delays can take a toll on the team because players aren't in their normal routines, but as for that start, you remember the forecast in New York was awful. 
They said the game would be rained out, no chance of playing, but Matheny says Wainwright blocked all of that out and prepped for the game like it wasn't in jeopardy. Total focus, you remember they played that game without delay, and Wainwright went out and threw seven innings of scoreless baseball. Yeah, and these hitters had Harvey on Thursday, then Fernandez on Friday. Travis Wood is at the plate. Jim, I know you had a, a conversation with John Mozalock on the pregame show, and uh, give us a little scoop on, on what he had to say about, uh, about Michael Walker and maybe his return to the big leagues and what he's doing right now is the pitcher hits a fly ball into left center field wood and that's caught by holiday but how about Michael Walker well Michael Walker as you know was sent back to AAA for reasons related to development but also apparently to rest they wanted to give him a little break because John Mazalock says that the plan for Michael Walker is to get back into starting mode and then rejoin the team later on when the games become even more and more important so they have definite plans for Michael Waka in St. Louis. All right. We appreciate it, Jim. Thanks. Back to the top of the lineup for Chicago. Luis Valbuena walked the first time up five pitches to start the game. Cubs pitchers very good hitters collectively and you hang a curveball they can do something with it Travis Wood has five career home runs that one hung up just a bit too much for him to be able to really do damage with it yeah Wood with two of those five this year Travis with seven RBIs Scott Feldman another pitcher that we'll see in this series he has eight RBIs that pitch was up and turned on by Valbuena base hit into right Thing I've noticed with the outfielders, the St. Louis Cardinals playing very deep tonight. I'm sure part of that due to the fact that the outfield is so wet. Valbuena on base for a second time, gets a base hit, and flips the bat like he just won the World Series. Who does he think he is, Tom Lawless? Is Tom uh, coaching with Houston still? He still is. You bet he is. Back and forth with him the other day, and he's enjoying his role. He's doing some roving this year. He's managed for a number of years in the organization, and just a baseball guy through and through. Just loves the game and loves to teach it. Jack Buck's call. Tom Lawless. Now that is hard to imagine. And Lawless, you would have thought it was leaving Bush Stadium. I mean, completely leaving the ballpark, and yet. It wasn't one of those home runs that was definitely for sure going to be out. But when you watch Lawless, you said, well, I, it's got to be out. Look at that reaction. When I'm with Tom at events, I usually introduce him by talking about that home run. And, and I believe it was 330 down the line at Old Bush Stadium. And I say that he hit it 331 feet. <laughs> he doesn't like that, but pretty close to accurate. Frank Viola who is now a pitching coach with the Mets in their minor league system was the a pitcher that night for Minnesota back in 1987. One ball one strike on Starlin Castro struck out on a 2 2 curveball. First time up 0 for 1. Castro if anything has been a hits machine and also durable playing in his 263rd consecutive game tonight if you're wondering the major league leader in that category Prince Fielder at 411 and that should not be a surprise to any of us played every day with Milwaukee sure did showing up every day swung at that last fastball like he doesn't want to swing at this curveball struck out last time on a curveball. Eyes lit up on the fastball. Another doubles up, wastes it a bit. Still trying to find that right release point with the curveball. He's had some good ones and some hangers.
The 2 2. And a Cardinal fan, Iva West, who was supposed to be at the game this evening, passed away yesterday. So we want to wish the West family our condolences and uh, wish them the best. And we'll miss Iva West. Here's a 2 2 pitch to Carlin uh, Starlin Castro. And it swung on and missed as he chased a fastball. Three strikeouts for Shelby. Get ready for Fox Sports 1, America's new 24 hour sports network. Be your home for great live sporting events and all the news and highlights you want. And it's coming August 17th. Fox Sports 1. Mention the routines of the players, and and I would say the hitters would have a harder time trying to simulate the things they do to get ready for a game than the pitchers would. You, you kind of back up the time. Okay, that's one thing. Your Shelby Miller or Travis Wood, but you can still kind of control the timing of when you go out to the bullpen. Shelby went out at 7:33 out to the bullpen with Derek Lilliquist, and that's a timed. Sequence before the game's first pitch, which all the players knew at that point. But for Nate Sherhoff to get enough swings in when you can't hit on the field and there's only a couple of cages below, you're not really going to get the same readiness, perhaps, to play. So I, the stretching that they have to do, the throwing they have to do, I think it's frankly tougher on hitters and pitchers. Nothing into the count on Nate Sherholtz. Aaron Miles said when he was in Chicago being a bench player was the most difficult position to be in with the Cubs because the facilities did not allow you to take BP underneath the stands visiting facilities even worse. When you think about the clubhouse and the and the weight rooms and in fact there was an issue one year the Cardinals actually had with the Cubs that that the visiting Amenities were not up to speed with the home teams, weight room, et cetera, and that's actually a league rule. It has to be comparable. You can't get an advantage by building your ballpark to where one team can get ready and the other can't. Cubs have proposed major renovations to Wrigley Field, including big signage that would upset many of those that uh, head to the rooftops or own those buildings. There's that high fastball. And it's two and two. Pitch number fifty seven. And goodbye. It's a strikeout. Back to back K's for Shelby Miller. And now with four tonight, scoreless midway through three.
hometown grocer. Steel, available exclusively at a servicing steel dealer. Visit steeldealers.com. Now's your chance to go big at Jack in the Box. Try Jack's Big Stack Burger. Two jumbo patties stacked with onion rings, cheese, and pickles. Bottom of three rolls in. Cubs and Cardinals scoreless here at Bush Stadium. Good start for Shelby Miller. That pitch count a bit high, and so is this fastball, but it's past. Starlin Castro may have been looking for that curveball. He got the high heat. There's a ground ball. Two second. Darwin Barney puts it away. So of the seven outs recorded, three strikeouts, three ground balls to second, and one pop out to second. Making it look easy. Lefties hitting just 155 against Travis Wood. The righties at 202. Mentioned it overall. He's the best right now in the National League, an opponent's batting average with Clayton Kershaw at 191. Pete Cosma looks at a strike. Travis Wood is trying to become the first Cub since 1988. Greg Maddox did this with 13 quality starts in the team's first 68 games. You start putting yourself in that category of Greg Maddox. You're doing something right. And he clearly is doing something right. One ball, one strike. Really fun to watch the career unfold of Greg Maddox when he was younger. He was kind of a brash young phenom kid that threw hard and he's kind of evolved over time to being maybe one of the best control pitchers this game's ever seen from us from a starting point of view or, or at least not say the best but top 10. So good around the plate. And big time winner. Wood had a game. Where he was perfect against the Philadelphia Phillies his rookie season. And still a rookie in 2010. Went seven and two thirds innings. Here's a 2 2 pitch to Cosmo. Last start for Wood was against his former team, the Cincinnati Reds. 2 1 loss. Gave up two runs, four hits, seven innings. So he's had 12 quality starts in his 13 outings this year. The 2 2. I mean, for any of us that has seen his career, you ask the question what's different now this season? Why is he so good? Well, I think he was that good when he was younger. He just wasn't that consistently good. And, and I think that's the difference. He's found some kind of groove here to where he's doing the same things he did. Where he had a near perfect game against the Philadelphia Phillies when he was with the Reds. He just really get more of a chance too. think about the Cincinnati rotation at the time. They had all those good young arms coming up at the same time. And he was in this mix of Leak and Homer Bailey and Cueto and Volquez. And, and he was kind of the odd man out. And so they'd send him back to AAA, call him back up, and maybe he just wasn't comfortable enough. There's a base hit for the Cardinals. First of the night off the bat of Pete Cosmo. Hustling all the way. He's thinking two and in safely with a double. Watching the outfielders on both sides, and it's not like we've had a bunch of hits out there, but you can see really tiptoeing in the outfield because of the wet grass and both sides playing very deep, and Cosma knew that. Hustling out of the box. Well, there's no score in this game, so that could become a factor at some point. What's an outfielder going to do with a slick baseball? Throw offline a bit, Pete Cosmo hustling. And right out of the box, he knows the arm of Soriano. And he also knows his own speed. Cosmo runs the base as well. Both he and Matt Carpenter, to me, the best base runners that the Cardinals have. Shelby Miller pops it up. Rizzo. Two away. First bank, first take. Two teams on opposite sides here. The Cubs hitting 226. 
with runners in scoring position the Cardinals 342 and that's best in Major League Baseball and I mean best by a huge wide margin. You might call it epic. Could be before this season is through. Carpenter at 354 with runners in scoring position and now that we're getting this deep into the season late June it is getting into that historic category of teams that are looked at the best with runners in scoring position the Cardinals this deep in a season one of the best all time game number 70 and it, you wouldn't call that a small sample size not at all as Carpenter skies one into right center Ryan Sweeney puts it away Redbird strand a runner that's Cosmo Soriano Rizzo Sweeney do up no score. MLB.com at bat. It's the uh, number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. iPhone, iPad, Android, BlackBerry 10. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Cardinals.com for details. Glad you're with us on a rainy night here in St. Louis. You have to think that the way that this has started, Rick, that we're definitely going to see the bullpen of the Cardinals high pitch count already for Shelby Miller. It's at 57 as we uh, start playing here in the fourth. You'd like to be at about 13 pitches an inning and he's at 19 an inning. It means he's got maybe six innings tops at this rate as opposed to being able to go deeper. So you're absolutely right. The Cardinals bullpen very aware of that by the way. They're understanding at this point in the game that that may be an early entrance for one of their sixth or seventh inning guys. Somebody like Seth Manus. Maybe Segrist, uh, they're going to be very aware of who they may have to face. I'm, I'm interested in watching Segrist pitch to some of these left-handers in the Cubs lineup. How good has he been? Oh, he's fun to watch. Ball jumps out of his hand as it does Shelby Miller. Seventh season now for Soriano wearing that cubby blue. And he is wearing some blue, isn't he? He is. Got it's kind of the brighter blue shoes and the high socks Monday. The high socks Monday look. He's got the kind of the guard that's another kind of shade of blue. One two is a ground ball hit to short. Cosmo with it. One away. Let's turn to our Twitter poll presented by AT&T. Which player has the best shot 
at the Hall of Fame. Tory Hunter, Andy Pettit, or Carlos Beltran. And we bring these guys up saying, well, how'd you come up with these three? Well, Hunter picked up career home run number 300 yesterday. Four-time All-Star. But you're talking about a guy that has 2,000 hits, nine gold gloves, 300 home runs for Tory Hunter. And this is Anthony Rizzo. Pettit, 250 career wins. Been on five world championship teams with the Yankees. And then Beltron, we've talked an awful lot about him, but 350 career home runs now for the switch hitter, seven time All Star. He's won three gold gloves, and uh, what makes it so unique a 300 300 man when you talk about Beltron, 300 home runs, 300 steals. And I would have to say he'll be part of the All Star game July 16th on Fox. Getting a lot of votes, isn't he? New list just came out. Some of those Cardinals starting to move up. Yadier Molina getting closer to Buster Posey. More votes for Matt Carpenter. Alan Craig moving up at first base. And Rizzo hits a fly ball into center. John Jay. Two away. When you think about the career of Carlos Beltran, the, the real question is going to be we look at Big Mac Land, where you could try the new Egg White Delight McMuffin, only 250 calories at McDonald's. Beltran, if he could put together four or five more years with big numbers, it'd be pretty incredible where he ends up. And that's all going to be predicated on being injury free. And you know, there's a lot of ifs there, but he could have some huge career numbers before it's all said and done. Efficient inning there for Shelby Miller. Speaking of Carlos Beltran, is he an all star again? We think so. The doorstep of Cooperstown as well. He'll lead it off when we come back. Carlos Beltran. Shannon Bobblehead is coming up. That's Friday, July 5th, presented by Goodwill. And the voice of the Cardinals on the radio side, Mike Shannon, featured with a uh, voice chip, the David Freeze, 2011, game six home run. And Mr. Shannon, what a treasure he is. Yeah, he'll be a part of it. So we've got his Bobblehead night coming up, the holiday jersey giveaway, and then uh, also that Sunday. 
Duck Dynasty's very own main man coming to St. Louis. Willie Robertson is Beltron. Delivers with a base hit out to left, and the Cardinals have their second hit tonight. Box tracks brought to you by Missouri Lottery. Right down central, up a little bit, away a little bit. Beltron has been a very good first ball hitter all season long, and really more of his powers come from the left side. He's hit 12 of his 16 home runs left handed, but Dan, as you've been saying, he's really a natural right handed hitter and provides a big threat from both sides. Here is Holiday. It's grounded into a league high 16 double plays. Big gap on the right side of the infield. The hold at first, and Barney is near the bag at second. There are certain switch hitters, and, and, and if I were to bring them up to you, you'd say, okay, I get it. Lance Berkman, would you rather have him bat left-handed or right-handed? Left-handed. Had a much better swing left-handed. Of course, had some decent years from the right side, but we saw teams that would pitch around situations to get him to try to hit with the game on the line right-handed. But with Beltron, oh, what a rocket that was, and a base hit. In the center, off the glove of Barney, and Travis Wood is saying, thank you, that was just a little bit, a foot or two away from my head. But finish your point there, Rick. Well, and that's what's so uh, incredible about Beltron. He's been so good from both sides of the plate, and really, teams can't try to stay one way with him, but how about that bullet? Wow. Barney can't handle it. And as you mentioned, Travis Wood, very thankful that he's 5'11 right now instead of 6'5". Yeah, we've seen we've seen enough of that. Yep over the last couple of years Hard hit balls up the middle pitchers getting hit and Some very dangerous situations latest was over the weekend against the Royals Tampa Bay's Cobb was hit on the head Taken to a hospital and thank goodness everything was okay. Now. It's Alan Craig third in the league with runners in scoring position And he hits a fly ball into right Sheerholtz makes the catch. Beltron tagging up from second to third. The Cardinals did not hit a ball hard the first three innings, and they've come out this inning and they've said, We're going to jump on it. It's that bad speed. The ball coming off the bat 105.3 in the Hyundai replay used to split second literally for a pitcher and you know you're so vulnerable out there and you wonder if baseball will mandate something for these pitchers after this year I think there's more momentum now than we've ever seen and I'd be behind that. Great view of that line drive by Holiday. How there was very little spin coming off the bat, almost not exactly a knuckleball, but you could tell he squared it up. And with his violent swing, his aggressive swing, and his powerful swing, he's thankful that Wood was not directly in the path. Two finals in baseball Cincinnati wins. They defeat the Pirates 4 1. Kansas City, a 2 1 winner. Amazingly back to 500 after the Royals lost 19 of 23. Mm. And Molina shoots it in the right center. One run will score. Holiday's digging for third. They'll wave him in. Here comes Matt. Yanni delivers. Two to nothing Cardinals. This offense was dormant for three innings, but they have exploded here in the fourth. Molina takes it the other way. Cardinal fans been looking for something to cheer for. Holiday sees it's in the gap right away, and he starts digging. 
No hesitation for Holiday Oro Kendo. 2 0 St. Louis. Now it's David Freeze. Chops it left side. Nice play to his left. Valbuena. And David is 0 for 2. That run scored by Matt Holiday, by the way, puts him at 53 runs scored. Tops on the club. Nice play by Valbuena going to his left. Checks the runner. Throws out David Freeze. The Cardinals clearly had a little uh, discussion of some sort. We've seen that before where they've made in-game adjustments pretty quickly with either Benji Molina or John Mabry with some instruction to say, okay, let's do something different here. And I think the key in this inning is they're just going after Wood. If it's close on that first pitch, they're hacking. Instead of letting him get ahead and then play play around with you with his changeup. There's John Jay, but uh, Rick, that's the game, isn't it? You know, adjusting as you go. Absolutely. There's Jay pops it up, shallow left, Castro going out, and he makes the catch. Yadier Molina, league's leading hitter to start a play tonight at 352, delivers with a double. Two to nothing, Cardinals. Com. A pair of writers are here tonight breaking down the game, and you can follow them at FoxSportsMidwest.com. Yadier Molina, the RBI double, to score two, and with that, a two run lead for St. Louis. Yadier has jumped up to 38 ribbies this year. Where are the Cardinals as far as the All-Star game is concerned? Beltron in the top three. Molina trailing Buster Posey and Matt Carpenter is third at second. You can vote Cardinals.com till July 4th. And you'll see the game on Fox. That's pulled foul by Wellington Castillo. I mentioned that the Royals won tonight, Rick, and I think to an extent we take for granted just the great run the Cardinals have been, uh, been on over the years. Kansas City at 500 this late in the season for the first time since 2003. Only the third time this late in the season since 1994. And give them some credit considering the way they had been playing when we saw them last. When we were in Kansas City they were struggling big time. They could not beat anybody and they were going in the wrong direction but for them to turn it around they deserve an awful lot of credit and maybe one of those cases where you want to play teams at the right time 
you know, the Cardinals may have played Kansas City at the right time. We may be playing Texas at the right time. The Rangers have lost six straight. Clearly an outstanding ball club, but it's not their best time. So play them then, beat them. They can get hot later. Three and one the count on Castillo. Line drive into right and that'll drop in for a hit. Again these outfielders playing very deep. And you wonder on a normal night without the rain if. That is caught. Clean base hit by Wellington Castillo. He's on base for the second time to go along with a walk in our charter high speed pitch. Looking at Miller and Travis Wood and Shelby has hit 96 tonight. Numbers you would expect. Miller maybe even a little higher than you might expect. Usually in that 94, 95 mile an hour range. There's Darwin Barney. Very good play by John Jay. Back in the second inning with that basket catch. Gap in left center to take a hit away. Wonder if the Cubs will have the same approach with Shelby Miller that the Cardinals had with Wood. They came out swinging against Wood. Castillo came out swinging first pitch, trying to hit Shelby Miller. But from the Cardinals' point of view, they might welcome that just so the pitch count can stay low enough for Shelby to get deep in this game. That's the problem with swinging at the first pitch. You might make three outs with four pitches and people would say well wait a minute you need to be more patient. Holiday is there. One away. What a great deal on Cardinals tickets head to Phillips 66 eight gallons or more you fill up there. Now until June 30th you receive up to 50 percent off on a pair of tickets to a Cardinals home game Cardinals.com slash Phillips 66. Shelby very aware how good a hitter Travis Wood is. That's part of the conversation. And maybe a reminder from David Freeze. And the right reminder might be, and it, so whatever he said drew a little bit of a laugh from Shelby. Might have been, now don't think he's bunting here. He might not be. So be careful. One out, runner at first. Showing bunt, and that's strike one. Mentioned that Feldman with eight RBIs, Wood with seven. Total, the pitchers of the Cubs with 22 RBIs this year. That's more than double any other staff in the National League. One ball, one strike. I Two and one. Found over the years that most good, not all good hitters, Dan. Are necessarily good bunners, but it sure seems like all good hitting pitchers are good bunners. Just seems like they have the ability to handle the bat. The bunning is something that you know a guy who's a 320 hitter may not be used to doing, but a pitcher typically spends a lot of time working at it in spring training. And we're going to have a visit to the mound with Shelby Miller. Wonder what's going on with him. That's Chris Conroy. Looks like a cramp. Way he was stretching, and you hope that's the case. You know, Shelby came into play this start tonight, ninth in opponents' average at 209, tied for eighth in wins with seven, fifth in ERA, and his home ERA 1.12. That's just a sample of how good he has been this year, and I think in our minds, the top rookie in baseball. Would you agree? I would agree.
And again, let's just hope it's a cramp. Then again, they haven't brought any water or Gatorade out there to try to help in that regard. That's kind of the cramp stretch that you would do if you had something in your calf or maybe a bit lower than that. So everybody seems satisfied. Yachty didn't seem that overly confident with that first little delivery from Shelby Miller when they were all kind of testing him out there. He kind of looked back at him and are you sure you're okay? And at this point you just have to trust what the pitcher says about his body. 2-1 pitch to Travis Wood. I think we would both agree too that he has not been overly sharp tonight. Yeah, but you know we're nitpicking at this point just because he's been so good. Isn't that great that we can have that kind of comment about a guy who's given up just two hits through four plus innings but I think what you mean by that Dan and, and, and you're right is the pitch counts higher exactly. he's, had, he's had some moments of lack of command of his curveball and the fastball has been erratic but but still again hard to argue with two hits. There's a strikeout. That portion of the plate has been inconsistent all night on both sides. Cardinals Fox Sports and the state of Missouri teaming up to help you stop smoking. For more information, call the quit line 1 800 quit now. Flip a coin on that uh, outside portion of the plate to the righties. You gotta love that about Shelby Miller that, that we are, as you say, nitpicking about. Some of the aspects of his game here tonight and he's working in the fifth inning with a two nothing lead and he's given up just two hits right. and he has. Five strikeouts. But he does have a couple of walks he's had a couple of. Deep counts. But wow I mean about about 15 more years of starts just like this. And again it's worth repeating 1.12 ERA at home. One oh pitch to Valbuena. High fly ball right field. Beltron drifting back to make the catch. Keep an eye on Shelby during the commercial break. Redbirds on top midway through five.
safety, the former Notre Dame wide receiver, Jeff Samarja. Five starts against St. Louis, a three and two record. We'll come your way at 6.30. That's our Budweiser What's On Tap. And Pete Cosma will lead it off. And then after that, we're going to see a pinch hitter as Shelby Miller. I don't think they're going to take any chances. Craig Houck, the trainer, said, uh-uh, you're not getting by me. We're going to go check this out. What makes me think that maybe it wasn't a cramp, Rick, is the point I brought up when he was out there. They never brought him a, you know, Gatorade or water, banana, whatever the case may be. And he was limping as we went to break. So on deck, they've got Ty Wigington and action in the bullpen. Precautionary move, I'm sure. But still, you you worry about it. Well, you know, that Mike, the thing he's been looking for ways to limit the innings of Shelby Miller he talked about that he's talked about looking for opportunities and maybe this is a clear one and it doesn't necessarily have to mean that it's you know, a major concern but it's enough of a concern to say let, let's take advantage of this opportunity and of course we won't know till and he may not know till tomorrow the fly ball lifted to center but then a strain or a cramp you know it, it often hard to tell the difference between the two from a Athlete's point of view, he's got a little tug, a little pull, a little sharp pain, whatever you want to call it. Is it a strain? Is it a cramp? Who knows? So five innings pitched for Shelby Miller. His night is through as he strikes out five. It'll be up to the bullpen. Here's Ty Wigginton. And if memory serves correct, Rick, I think he was stretching out the right leg which would be that leg that he's pushing off on right on the mound not his land not the planting leg the front left so hopefully we'll get more information about this as the night progresses so Wigginton the pinch hitter and Miller is through Seagrist you wanted to see more of him well you're going to get your wish tonight didn't want it this way I always felt like there was a sense for the the lower leg to be more of a problem with the push off because you've got kind of that that part of your leg activated you're going to drive to the plate you're going to use your, your lower half of your leg to push off the rubber and then the landing leg you typically land solid and then do a little bit of turning with it as you pitch and that tends to be more your knee or hip issue on, on that side and for a right handed pitcher that would be the left side his landing side more knee and hip and driving off the mound if that's the leg it would be kind of from pushing off the rubber. 3 1 pitch to Wigginton. And we hope it's just a minor deal for Shelby Miller. Again, just taking kind of the smart approach. Pitch count was high already. And for Travis Wood, that's strikeout number four. Trying to be optimistic about it as best I can, Dan. But I think there's I think there's reasons for it. And I think you didn't see, I mean he was able to finish the inning for one. Top of the lineup in here is Carpenter. So Travis Wood has proven to be a very tough lefty and a high strike to Carpenter. He struck out back in the first, also flied out to center. Matt Carpenter's done a ton of his damage here at Bush Stadium, hitting 370 here at home. 0 1 pitch. Make it 0 2. Really playing him to pull on the infield. Valbuena way off the bag, giving him that third base line. Carpenter, like Yadier Molina, has a lot of doubles this season. And when you think of Carpenter's doubles, they're really all over the place. What's interesting about this lefty Wood is how tough he has been on hitters one through five. They're hitting 153 this year against him. After that is when most teams have done their damage in the bottom of the lineup. And Carpenter slices one into center field, and the catch is made by Ryan Sweeney. So it's up to the bullpen tonight. Cardinals on top.
is brought to you by Five Hour Energy Shots. And the Cardinals, Fox Sports, and the state of Missouri are teaming up to help you stop smoking. For more information, call the quit line at 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Come to the ballpark, peanuts, hot dogs, popcorn, Cracker Jack, pizza, you name it, they've got it here at Bush Stadium. It's our Chevy call to the pen. And Kevin Segrist is into the ball game. Zero ERA in his five appearances, and he's done this in dominating fashion with a lot of strikeouts. Giving up just one hit, strikeout to walk ratio, nine to one. Overpowering fastball we've seen from the left side. Just jumps out of his hand. And he's a name that we've been hearing for a little over a year as a guy that really could be a big plus late in games from the left side out of the bullpen, although there's still a number of people that think he could be a starter. Has a good changeup. Not his best pitch, but doesn't use it as much out of the bullpen. But if you're a starter, you're really typically a three pitch pitcher and the bullpen most often you get a chance to use too. So if you're just joining us, Shelby Miller, his night cut short from an apparent uh, injury. And hopefully it's not serious. So five innings and a chance to pick up another win tonight for Shelby. Segrist to Nate Sheerholtz. Look at the delivery of Segrist, what we were talking about earlier with Shelby, Shelby Miller. You can see the kind of the strain that you would have on your back leg as you push towards the plate and maybe the kind of the hard impact of the right leg as it lands. And then the twist that follows. And you know, kind of a violent action to, to pitch. In fact, most doctors say that the reason everybody has sore arms is your, your arm's not meant to go that way. More meant to go like a softball pitcher would, but when it's above your arm or your arms above your shoulder like that, that is not the way your arm is built. You're straining muscles, and so a pitcher is only going to last but so long throwing 95 miles an hour from over top. 3 1 pitch taken just a bit low. So Sheerholtz draws the walk. That's the third walk issued by the Cardinals. And Cardinals official announcement on Shelby Miller is cramping in the right leg as to why he was removed. So these young starters. It continues possibly this Friday for Tyler Lyons and that's his next scheduled start. That would be against Texas and with more on that let's check in with Jim Hayes. Yeah his uh, first two big leads league starts were great. Uh, the next three not so much you reference. His next start against Texas, Mike Matheny said today they will stick with Lions. Matheny says, as he sees it, a few bad pitches cost Lions in the work to help him get back on track for his part. Lions says the arm feels great. He knows what he has to do to make the corrections, and he can't wait to get the ball on Friday, guys. Rick, being a former major league pitcher and pitching coach, as you get a look at Soriano, what did you see yesterday as opposed to? The first couple of starts in which he was so dominating as Soriano takes strike one. I think Jim's right on where he's talking about the comments from Mike Matheny that there were a few different instances where it could have been a good start. Now it wouldn't have been a great start because he did give up eight hits in the game and, and his control was off a bit. But he really just made a couple of bad pitches with two outs uh, in the middle of the game. It actually led to four of the runs and you know you give up two runs and five and a third in innings of the big leagues you'd say okay that's a decent start but the mistakes that he made at not finishing off innings and particularly walking the pitcher Ricky Nolasco in fact he walked him twice first two starts for Tyler Lyons the ERA was low and he's given up quite a few more hits in his last three outings as well the ERA has been high 
and the six walks in the last three starts again two of them to the pitcher Ricky Nolasco. O2 pitch to Soriano. The fly ball lifted to right. Backing up Beltron. Puts it away. Out number two. Interesting. You were talking about it earlier about John Moselock saying that you wanted to have Michael Waka go to Triple A so he would not he would get to rest a little more. And, and folks would say, now wait a minute, you're going to send him down to Triple A. Isn't he going to pitch down there? And, and and the answer is yes, he is. But when you're in Triple A, you're not going to be as let's say motivated to necessarily use every starter on every fifth day if you don't have to if you want to get him a couple extra days you can do it and 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 it's not that big a deal I mean yeah they they're trying to win down there but if you try to get rest for one of your starting pitchers at the big league level and skip a turn with him you are just creating a lot of havoc with your bullpen so the Cardinals can be more careful with the innings of a starting pitcher at the triple A level and I think that's what Jim and Mike Matheny were reporting earlier about Max Scherzer first Detroit Tigers pitcher since 1909 to start 10 and 0 as he wins another game tonight. Last time a pitcher did it overall was 1997 Roger Clemens and Scherzer had 10 strikeouts tonight. That's now 13 straight six or more K's and. Max from this area pitched at University of Missouri and it's been almost a year to the day that his brother passed away younger brother Alex. So I know his parents watch and many of his family and friends. Nice going Max Scherzer. Well you'd hate to play the Tigers in a two game series with man you? Oh man <laughs> Verlander Scherzer. <laughs> yeah. But Sanchez why they're so good in the playoffs exactly you put those three together and you got very little chance by the way the one two combination in their lineup isn't bad either <laughs> right. fielder Cabrera how do they lose I was thinking the same thing here's the 0 2 to Rizzo just missed Anibal Sanchez was just put on the disabled list today but They've had some issues in the back end of their bullpen with their closer, but still, Jim Leland. I, I talked to him at length spring training when they came to uh, Jupiter, and we've gotten a chance to know him. Oh yeah, his days with the Cardinals is a guy that would help out Tony Larusa. Neat guy, baseball man through and through, old school. But even he said, "I don't like my club." I said, "What do you think?" And he said, "Yeah, I like it." You know, it was just one of those things where he. Quiet confidence. He knew such a they're going to be pretty good. Such a straight shooter. One of my one of my first really long conversations with Jim Leland was after I'd gotten released the second time. I called him in his office before a game. I just somehow got the ballpark at Pittsburgh, and they sent me right down. And I'm talking to Jim Leland and Ray Miller, the pitching coach, trying to get a job. And he said no, but in a very direct, likable. Positive way. I mean, I, I've just loved him ever since then. And, That's great. And wasn't the answer I wanted to hear, but but he has a way of being such a straight shooter and he's such a good baseball guy that I mean, every time the, the Tigers are playing, most every time, I'm rooting for Jim Leland. Sure. From 0 2 to 3 2, Rizzo could tie it up with one swing. Fights it off, little floater down the left field line and out of play. I've just encouraged all baseball hopefuls to call the, right. <laughs> the Pirates managers of Pirates your various teams. Say, right. Can I speak to the manager? <laughs> oh, poor Clint Hurdle tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, eight home runs hit in April by Anthony Rizzo, eight of his ten. And the month of June, it's been a tough go. 163 no home runs. And tonight he is 0 for 2. 3 2 pitch and on his hands again. Rizzo has a pretty unique stance for a guy that hits with some pop. He does not have you know, his bat really pretty low and, and kind of has that choked up stance and and the 
bat really pretty much just right in front of him. It's not really pulled way back. It's just kind of a, a short little swing. Little Barry Bonds looking. Strikeout of Rizzo. The first of the night for Segrist. And the Cubs strand their fifth runner of the evening. We'll go to the home half of the sixth. Hyundai replay. Bullpen trying to make it stick for Shelby Miller tonight. Well pitched on both sides as Travis Wood goes back to work and here is Carlos Beltran. Leads it off for St. Louis. Beltran. Popped out to second. And you notice the trend in that fourth inning it started with Carlos. Aggressive early in counts and he hit the first pitch to left field and came around to score on Yachty's double. Two balls, one strike. Beltron leads National League outfielders in All Star voting. Almost 2.4 million votes vaulted past Justin Upton, Bryce Harper, and Carlos pops it up. Shallow left field, and the catch made by Soriano. Crowd tonight of 44,172. At the beginning of the night, they saw Shelby Miller, and then they saw him leave after 83 pitches, five innings, limping off. And they said that was due to cramps in his right leg. So our head and shoulders whip package. Let's take a look at Shelby. Curveball gets Castro. Another curveball gets Soriano in the first inning. And Shelby also got some strikeouts later on with the fastball up in the zone. Very good outing for Shelby Miller. You could see his, what Mike Matheny would have seen on that last view of Shelby walking off the field as Holiday hits one right on the nose, right at Valbuena. But you could see the little grimace on the face as he was walking in just a slight limp. And you know, Mike Matheny was saying before the game in Florida on Saturday that he believes that he's really working to become a good student of almost psychology of, of of his players and understanding kind of what makes them tick they're all different you know guys some guys need to be kicked some guys need to be hugged some guys need to be 
kind of encouraged, whatever it might be, but, but just trying to understand their body language. And I think he saw some body language of Shelby Miller right there that said he was through. Alec Craig has struck out and also flied out to right. 0 for 2. Outfield deep and straight away. Two outs, nobody on. The hottest race right now in the National League for the All-Star game. Buster Posey saw his lead over Yachty dwindle to about 63,000. So in the All-Star vote, that's nothing. That'll be a tight race. Either way, you'd figure those two wind up in New York as Craig hits it on the button, but right at the center fielder, Ryan Sweeney. Sweeney leads it off when we come back. Dynasty featured speaker Christian Day at the ballpark. That's July 7th. July 7th, Christian Day at the ballpark. That weekend, also the Mike Shannon bobblehead, the Matt Holiday jersey giveaway, and you get to mix in Willie Robertson for Christian Day. Second inning of work for Segrist. It's Ryan Sweeney, Wellington, Castillo, and Darwin Barney. Then the pitcher spot. That pitch taken, I guess, high. Sweeney has flied out to left and also grounded out to second. Seth Manus getting loose in the Cardinal bullpen. Sweeney was picked up by the Chicago Cubs. Boston released him March 30th. And he's seen a big league action with the White Sox, the A's, Red Sox, a career 280 hitter. Backhanded by Cosma, settles, throws, low throw, picked by Craig. You just see, even with some of these uh, infielders, and they just that half inning worked on the dirt of the infield, but just, uh, you know, just trying to get some type of footing to make that throw, but a good play by Cosma. And that'll be it for Segrist. They're going to go to the bullpen here. ERA for Segrist, zero. He's been something.
Wellington Castillo against Seth Manus. Our Chevy called to the pin. One out, nobody on, and the pitch is taken low. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't have mind as you get a look at the numbers for Seth Manus. Seeing Segrist extended beyond the four outs and for the third time tonight and second time in the last 30 seconds. That's our Chevy call to the pen. Here's a ground ball to second base. Castillo is out number two. Twitter poll presented by AT&T. Hunter, Pettit, Beltron. No surprise that Carlos gets 77% of those votes. I would have bet the house on that one. On a Cardinal telecast. Voting for our guy. Pettit's going to have some interesting, let's say, history that's going to go against him. You mentioned the positive history of the 250 wins, but he, of course, has been tied to the HGH allegations, and folks aren't forgetting that. Two quick outs for Seth Maness. Time to stretch here at Bush Stadium. Cards Cubs on Fox Sports Midwest. Cardinals uh, bullpen solid thus far. Don't forget about the holiday jersey, the replica jersey presented by Tickets.com the weekend, July 5th, 6th, and 7th. Mike Shannon bobblehead, holiday jersey, and Willie Robertson all that weekend. Kevin Segrist is sixth scoreless appearance, hasn't allowed a hit since his major league debut. I mean, that's how good he's been. Got four outs, main is two, and here we are in the bottom of the seventh. And I did not get a chance to agree with you, Dan, but I did and was thinking exactly the same thing. I would like to have seen Seekers go longer and you know, saw nothing in, in the way he throws that he can't get right-handers out, and certainly at the bottom of the order, and Mike Matheny decided to go to Manus to get those last two outs in the seventh inning, and Ho-hum, he got a couple of ground balls, as he always does. And Yachty hits it out of play. Molina with one of the big hits tonight. Gapper in the right center. Nissan drive of the game. This would score two of the only two runs that have scored. 2-0 St. Louis. Fights it off into shallow center. That drops in for a hit. 
two hit night for Yachty. Came in at 352. And Troy Tulowitzki, who's now on the DL with broken ribs, trails Molina at 347. What kind of jump does the center fielder Sweeney get? Clearly, Yachty is jammed. And not a bad jump, but he knows he can't get it, so he holds up. You have to, as an outfielder, read kind of where the pitch is, and you can almost hear the sound, too. You can hear the sound. And kind of try to judge whether or not that ball is hit well or not. Little flare off the bat of Molina. Strike one on David Fries. He's grounded out to second. And a very good play by Valbuena, the third baseman, last time up to his left. Good hitters get a lot of hits like Yachty's we just saw. They're strong enough to fight off pitches that aren't really in their wheelhouse. That pitch in on the hands of Yachty, just kind of just enough, keep his hands in, fight it off. Good things happen when you make contact. You know, Molina, that double gives him 22, which leads the club. He's now up to 88 hits, second to only Gene Segura, the shortstop of Milwaukee. The other thing that makes Yachty, I think, to an extent a candidate to, to finish in the top five or ten in hitting is the fact he doesn't strike out. Put the ball in play, right. good things happen. He's the fifth toughest to strike out in the National League. Great two strike approach that we've been talking about. Uses all fields. Occasional power. Certainly has the gap power. We saw that earlier tonight in the fourth inning. That's how the Cubs defend David Freeze. Straight up in the outfield and deep. Up the middle, base hit. First to have reached. Right hander is throwing for the Cubs in their bullpen. Plenty to choose from out there. They have seven righties, one lone lefty, and that's James Russell. Right back up the box. No chance for Barney. Location a little bit too middle, middle. See how the Cardinals want to play it here with John Jay. First two have reached. If you bunt, you've got to have Molina get a very good secondary lead. With his speed, you'd have a chance to get him on the force play at third. Valbuena expecting the bunt. Blake Parker, the right-hander, getting loose for Chicago. Bunt is down. Perfect by Jay. Runners advance to second and third. Nobody was at third base, so Yachty could have just walked on over to third. And the sacrifice is good by John Jay. Well, the only way to have the shortstop cover third is to put the wheel play on. And then you open up the middle of the infield. And when the wheel play is not on, if you can get the bunt to the third baseman, there's nobody at third. So you can go ahead and bunt it hard. That's what you do. Runners at first and second. Bunt it hard down the third baseline. But if the wheel plays on, and the shortstop is trying to beat that runner to the third. That's when you're trying to get that lead runner. Cosma first pitch popped up Rizzo giving chase. And out of play we talked about earlier this season. How certain teams really want to get that lead runner at all costs and other teams just care about getting an out. The Cubs played that right there like they just want to get an out. And. It's actually not a wrong philosophy. It's just how some teams do it. The Brewers do it that way. The Cubs do, but the Cardinals have been very aggressive at trying to get that lead runner. First base open. Shane Robinson is on deck. And Cosma pops this one up to the left side. Out of room is Valbuena. Pete Cosma. Picked up the first Cardinal hit back in the third, a double out to left. He's also fly to center. He's got to feel like he just got two new lives there, too. He's had a ball to the right side that went to the first row, and one to the left side that went to the first row. Had to be thinking I'm out twice. So take advantage of it, 0 2. 
By the way, the two hits tonight for Yachty just doing the numbers, and I think I'm right. 356 for Yachty or Molina. You are a math whiz. Ground ball, and Valbuena makes the play. Cosma hustling, and safe. And Rizzo throws it away. A play at the plate. And Molina is safe. They're going to say he's safe. How did that happen? No argument from the pitcher, Travis Wood. But now Dale Swain will certainly argue that. Somehow he's safe, and the Cardinals have a three-run lead. What a sloppy play that was. Dale Swain is hot. A lot of boiled up frustration coming to the surface for Dale Swain. And he may not be done until he gets tossed. Yeah, now right there. There we go. That's what he wanted. Rattle him up even more. DJ Rayburn was supposed to be the first base umpire today. And right about now, he's wishing he had been. I'll give the umpire credit, Rick. He has tried to walk away a couple of times. He's let Dale Swain have his say. And it was done professionally. And that's Bill Welke. He's the crew chief who is supposed to be behind the plate. And here's the call. Here's the argument in question. Throws there in plenty of time. The high tag, is Yachty safe or not? Boy, Travis Wood actually has home plate blocked. Can't tell from that angle. How about this one? He's blocking home. There's the tag. Is Yachty's foot in or not? Boy. Hey, Dale Swain's got a pretty good argument. The other thing, too, at this level, Rick, as you well know, throw beats you 99 out of 100 times. They're going to call you They're out. They're going to call you out. So, but in the meantime, all the Cardinals advanced, including Cosma, to second base. You know, it's really started with a good play by Valbuena, the third baseman. Made a diving attempt. And I think they're going to make the runners go back. That's what it looks like here. They're going to make at least Cosma go back to first. And freeze. I'm not sure that's the right call. I'm not either because you're talking about a question of when it becomes a dead ball and the advancing of Cosma to second base. I think Mike Matheny's right about this. They might have been wrong about the play at the plate. I'm not sure they're doing this as an appeasement or not, but I, I don't know why Cosma has to stay at first base. The play was still going on. Exactly. Mark Zinn and Mike Pevinar are watching tonight on Fox Sports Midwest. And so when's the timeout called? Here's they the play. They can't believe it. He's safe. Everybody's not happy, but you, you the play's still going on right now. You can argue all you want, but the play's still going on. And if people are moving, now there's timeout. At that point in time, where is Pete Cosman? In my mind, watching it live, he was already headed to second base. How many times have you seen that, that call at first where a first baseman starts arguing? And as he's arguing, a runner scores from second because the play is continuous. There's Chris Bazio, the pitching coach for Chicago. Dale Swaim has been ejected from this game. The umpire cannot call time if something is continuing, and that's the whole point. He called time, but he did it because he knew an argument was coming and would. I'm with you. I think he was the tag. He was trying to get kicked out, too. He was going to get his money's worth. It's a frustrating year trying to back your guys. But I'm also with you. I don't understand how Pete Cosma's not at second base. Regardless, he stands at first. The Cardinals somehow get Yachty home. There's one out that was on the sacrifice by Jay, and here is Shane Robinson as a pinch hitter. I 
I think Travis Wood would have gone crazy too if the situation with the runners was different because I mean, he got up and it clearly looked like, to, in my mind, Yachty was out. Way outside to Shane Robinson. So it's an infield hit for Cosma. And the errors on the throw home. Rizzo, Rizzo. That is air number three. They believe he's going to win a gold glove before uh, before it's all said and done. He panicked a bit on the throw. Yep. Didn't have to really make that throw. Almost as if when he started to throw it he wishes he'd have stopped. And that's why it kind of sailed over the catcher's head. Shane Robinson. Appeared in uh, 45 games this year. The corners are in. Freeze is your runner at third. Good speed at first and Cosma. You can do a lot of things here. Sure can. Squeeze one of them. Yep. You bring that up especially with. Left handed pitcher. Not getting a better look at that runner. At third. Also a right handed batter. So the combination if you wanted to do it. Wouldn't be bad here. They're playing for a double play. One of the reasons against doing it would be Shane Robinson who runs well probably. One of the tougher Cardinals to double up. Here's a 1 1 pitch to Robinson. 2 and 1. This would be the count. Verbal signs from Okendo. Two and two. Now with two strikes, let's see what they want to do with their corners. One thing that Travis Wood in his career has been great at holding runners on. There's only been 14 steals completed against him in nearly 500 big league innings. Pretty impressive. Quick to the plate. Pays attention. Two and two the count on Shane Robinson. Wood varies his moves to first base as well. Wood's quality start string. What he's done this year where he's had 12 out of 13 in jeopardy here. And Robinson hits a fly ball out to left. Soriano makes the catch. Freeze will tag up. Shane Robinson off the bench delivers an RBI at St. Louis. Now with a four run lead. Situational hitting by Shane Robinson doing exactly what he's supposed to do. Try to get it. A ball into the outfield mislocation by Travis Wood up in the zone. And as of now. Best I understand it that would be an unearned run that could change. Based on what happens here. Carpenter is over three. Now the pitch count here for Wood is only at 82. His spot in the lineup is due up first. Pitch count here at the ballpark has 82. We have 80, so I'll say it's probably 81. Here's the 0 1. And Carpenter slices one out to left, and Soriano makes the catch. We played seven. Cardinals add to their lead.
Four to nothing, St. Louis, and we welcome you back to Cardinals baseball. Let's go to our studio at a Bomberito Sports Update with Pat Perez. Okay, Pat, thanks. And Trevor Rosenthal is in. Julio Orbone is the pinch hitter. Five for 21 with an RBI is a pinch hitter. Rosenthal, just a tremendous campaign thus far. It's our Chevy call to the bullpen. 33rd appearance. You'd love to see the 47 Ks to just six walks for Trevor. Showing you first batter efficiency too, which I think is a pretty important number for a reliever. You get out 70% of that first hitter. I would say that's a pretty good number. First pitch strikes matter, and getting your first hitter out matters, especially out of the bullpen. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Rosenthal right now is fourth among National League relievers in strikeouts. 34 plus innings of relief. That's tops on the club. Also leads in appearances. And Rick I may be wrong about this but it, it just seemed like the first couple of weeks of the season every night Rosenthal was being used and now it's you know back to back here and there but they're spread out a little bit more and he's maintained velocity and sharpness that's proven in the numbers. I think there are a couple of reasons for that I think number one you, you have this wonderful toy. In Trevor Rosenthal that's throwing 98 miles an hour you want him out there as often as possible and it's just such a logical choice. In so many ways for a lot of different kinds of situations but. Beyond that the Cardinals bullpen was struggling. In some ways early on for that change up at 87. That's almost unfair 98. Then down to 87 strikeout for Trevor. Not a ton of offense tonight for the Cardinals in our subway in game box score. The two hits tonight. Yachty's up to 356, two for three for the league's leading hitter. Cardinals had just lost Jason Mott. Mitchell Boggs had some rough moments. There was no Seth Manus out there. There were some struggles from the left side of the bullpen. So Rosenthal was kind of your number one choice a lot of nights. Two balls and one strike. And we showed that amazing graphic over the weekend that the entire bullpen is different. Everybody. There's not one person that was out there this time last year that currently is throwing for the Cardinals in their pen. And it's pretty different from two months ago, too. No Salas. No Boggs. No Zepchinski. Three and two. Go back to 2011 and that first uh, couple of weeks, you had Brian Augenstein out there. No Zepchinski in 2011 until the end. There's Jason Mott there. And it's a one out walk. So just the seventh walk issued by Rosenthal this year. We hope to visit with Jason Mott up in the broadcast booth at some point this week. We're going to ask for permission to do that. Jason has agreed to do it. Be nice to get Jason Mott up here in the booth. And he's told all of us that the rehab is going well. Here's Starlin Castro. 0 for 3. Fastball and a strike at 97. He struck out on a 2 2 curveball. Chased a fastball to strike out the second time. And then against Segrist, Castro flied out to right. 
Line drive, base hit into right field. Cubs making some noise here in the eighth. Two on, one out, and the heart of the lineup coming up. Pretty good location. Down in the zone. Good fastball hitter. Outside of the uh, the win or the loss tonight, the big story for the Cardinals, Shelby Miller. The report is cramping in the right leg as to why he was removed after five innings. The Cardinals hold on. That's win number eight for Shelby. And maybe a blessing in disguise to cut through some of those innings that are piling up. One oh pitch broken bat little fly ball and that'll drop in a run will score and just like that the Cubs get on the board and with that you have the tying run coming to the plate and Alfonso Soriano a walk in two consecutive hits Albuena. Hesitated going around the bag at third. Eventually, he came in to score. And Castro only at second base. Took a long time kind of making his mind up whether or not he was going to go. He runs so well, you'd think he could go from first to third, but perhaps he was looking at that bat flying past him. A little less concerned about whether the ball was going to drop, but make a big difference if he could be on third base right now. Twelve pitches over ninety five miles an hour. For Rosenthal velocity never a problem for him. Be careful here Alfonso Soriano. Chicago with just four hits, but two of those coming in this inning. Soriano represents the tying run. Interesting that you've got Rizzo on deck and yet no lefty throwing in the pin, which would be Randy Choate. First run allowed in the last 22 and a third, that stretch for Rosenthal. I believe that's Mejica throwing in the pen. Got him. Old fashioned hardball. You want some? Come and get it. He blew it right by him. Struck by your phrase, be careful here. Crowd enjoying that at bat with Alfonso Soriano. He blows him away with this fastball up in the zone and you know when you say be careful that's a that's a good quote. what does that mean but well, what it means is throw good pitches and he did so Rosenthal will give way to Mahika who's been sensational this year 4-1 St. Louis
19 for 19 for Mejica, who's been outstanding. Number that really stands out. One walk in 29 and two thirds innings for the righty that was thrust into the closer spot mid April. It's our Chevy call to the pin. Rizzo with power at the plate. Hits it down the right field line. I bet he wants that back. I bet he does. And you think about the decision here to bring in Mujica. Really three choices for Mike Matheny. Could leave Rosenthal in. Who's given up three base runners in this inning. So perhaps not his day. You want to go to somebody. But why not Randy Choate with a couple of left-handers. Rizzo and Sweeney. Rosenthal has given up a home run and three at bats to Rizzo that may have kind of sealed the deal there with choice a Randy Choate one for two against Rizzo you wouldn't think that would be significant one one a liner into right and Mejica gets Rizzo Baseball on Fox Sports Midwest brought to you by Bud Light the sure sign of a good time here we go and by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals 4-1 lead for the Cardinals here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis newly acquired Henry Rodriguez, Chevy Cole to the pin. Again, they have eight relievers. Collectively, the bullpen, nine and ten with an ERA of 4.28. And Rick, if you want to break it down even further, it's our Chevy Cole to the pin. Collectively, the bullpen for the Cubs is just 13 for 21 in save opportunities. They're looking for answers. You mentioned they got a lot of guys out there. Jobs are open. Bottom of the eighth, and here is Beltron. <laughs> Ouch. 99, and it's off the shin of the home plate umpire. He's been in the thick of it here the last couple of innings. The Cardinals will ask Mejica to get four outs tonight to pick up the save. One four out save this season. That was his first save back on April 18th. Against Philly. Ouch. Oh. 
And that hits Beltron. So two pitches that were inside and Carlos is aboard hit by a pitch. Not even close with either delivery. These two have any uh, kind of history here? I don't wouldn't think so. Not that I'm aware of. The umpire, just in case, always kind of walks out in front of the batter that was uh, hit. Maybe Carlos asking Rizzo, do you know of any history we have that I don't know about? Here is Holiday. This guy's bringing some smoke. Oh, he huh? does. He throws very hard. Ooh. We've seen him before. Good live fastball. 97 that last delivery. It's probably uh, major league players watching this telecast saying, huh, Welcome to our world when we face the Cardinals. Exactly. Yeah. Seems like every guy coming out of the pen is throwing this hard. Oh, and two. You know a guy's throwing hard when Holiday is having issues trying to catch up. Usually can gear up for a fastball, maybe start a little bit earlier. That swing. Players used to always talk about there being kind of this hitting zone. You know, it would at the time was 85 to 91, and you know you could be comfortable with anything there. But you got up into 92, 93, a little tougher to see. And then the guys who were really kind of extra tough were the guys in the upper 90s. And he hangs a breaking ball, and Soriano misplays it out and left. Beltron held up at third. And Soriano commits his fifth error. The Cubs have committed two errors tonight. And that's as poorly as we've seen him play a baseball in a long time. Well, you mentioned he's worked on his defense. Holiday hits the curveball, and the ball just scoots underneath him. A little surprised Beltron doesn't score here. That ball almost looked like it took a bounce backwards. And he does. I mean, you can see him starting to reach out his glove, and the ball goes almost behind him, like he overran it a bit. Cardinals threatening for more. Here is uh, Alan Craig, runners at second and third. He can make this a non save situation, potentially. And Craig is hitting 435 with runners in scoring position. Hitless tonight. You know, the Cubs in this bullpen blew a three run lead with Marmol yesterday with the Mets. Rick, they're 20 and 18, though, their record outside the division, but in the Central, 8 and 21. Right, notice that. Fly ball lifted to right field. Catches made near the track. Runner tags up. Both of them will. RBI for Craig, and that's number 52. D2 driven in for Craig at the start of play tonight. He was fourth overall in the league. A run produced here partly because of the error by the left fielder Soriano. But we're going to check out the reaction of the third baseman Valbuena, who seems a little bit kind of disinterested in what's going on himself, walking over to third base. Not really a lot of energy in his movement. Runner at third, and here's Molina. Ground ball that's hit to Castro as Yachty slams down the bat. And there's two away. So Molina, two for four tonight. And it's up to David Freeze. Freeze with a single up the middle and a run scored. 
That was back in the seventh. He's also grounded out to second and grounded out to third. Freeze with a high fly ball into center field. Sweeney back near the wall and he's got it. David gave it a ride. Cardinals strand a runner. They pick up a run. 5 1 St. Louis. As we head to the ninth in St. Louis, coming up after the game on the post-game edition of Missouri Lottery Cardinals Live, Pat Paris and Al Roboski will be at Lumiere Place, an early exit for Shelby Miller. Because of cramping, they'll break down his night. We'll have Mike Matheny's post-game thoughts, plus plenty of Cardinal reaction straight from the clubhouse. Edward Mojica back out there to try to close it out. We go back to the booth and Dan and Rick guys. Yeah I picked up the uh, final out last inning Jim and uh, same situation here for Mejica. Here's Ryan Sweeney and the first pitch is taken for a strike. Rick when you look at Mejica righties lefties really doesn't matter. Lefties 160 righties 179. And here at home, Edward Mejica, eight for eight in save opportunities. He's given up a total of 13 hits, or rather, excuse me, five hits in just 13 innings. 0.68 ERA here at Bush Stadium. Things are working, just keep riding a horse. 19 saves on the season. And he has had one four out save this season. That came on April 18th against the Phillies. Turn now to our Budweiser player of the game, and we'll give it to maybe the first half MVP, and that's Yadier Molina, Budweiser player of the game. Here's Castillo with one down. Strikeout of Soriano in the eighth inning by Trevor Rosenthal. A really big moment in this game. The Cubs had something going in that eighth inning. They had a one out walk, then a couple of base hits. And as you mentioned, Soriano, watch out, be careful. And he has the ability to change a game with one swing of the bat. We've seen it many times before. And not the best outing we've seen from Trevor Rosenthal all season long, but that was a very big moment in this one. 
Shelby Miller a chance at the win tonight. Cardinals hold on. That would be his eighth. That misses. We've got Wainwright going tomorrow night. We'll come your way at 6:30. That's against Samarja. Adam 10 and 3, ERA 2.18. Third in ERA, second in innings pitched. Two shutouts this year. He's been spectacular. As Beltron puts it away for round number two. It's worth repeating, Rick, that the Cardinals can hold on. Miller joins Alan Bennis, Jaime Garcia. Since 1969, the only three Cardinal rookies to have recorded eight wins prior to the break. Great start for Shelby. Great start for the Cardinals. They could get to their high water mark again of plus 20. And how about these fans? You mentioned it earlier. They waited out a very long rain delay, and plenty of them stayed for this one. There's a high fly ball off the bat of Darwin Barney, and it is a fair ball and gone. Fourth home run given up by Mejica this year. Three have been from the right side, and Barney takes him deep. That's home run number three. Five to two, St. Louis. Diner Navarro will be the pinch hitter. It's okay. Still a 5 2 lead. It's okay. She said it twice. It's okay. On the bench for the Cubs right now, they have Cody Ransom and Scott Hairston, the only two position players left. Slicing into left center could be trouble. Holiday over, and he makes the catch, and the Cardinals win it. They take game one of the four game series, five to two. Mejica gets the save. Edward Mejica now is save number 20. And Shelby Miller picks up win number eight. Cardinals had just enough offense against Travis Wood, who's been the Cubs' best starter. But they took care of business. A couple of runs in the fourth, two more in the seventh. Yadier Molina, the offensive hero again tonight. But plenty of positive pitching from the Cardinals. Five to two, the final tonight. Stay with us. Post game next.